Hi, I'm Brandon Grayson. I'm a high school math teacher. Let's look at sine law and cosine law and when you should use each one uh, to solve for part of a triangle. Uh, here's the sine law written with the uh, length divided by the sine of the opposite angle. Um, a over sine A is equal to B over sine B, which is equal to C over sine C. And you can flip this over the reciprocal of this, sine A over A equals sine B over B equals sine C over C. And so to use this, you've got to know three out of four pieces of information from two of these ratios. So for example, you might know a little a little b capital A, the angle, uh, but you don't know capital B and so you can if you fill in the other three values you can solve for the remaining value. That's great as long as you know three pieces of information from any two of the ratios. But for example if you know a, b, and angle c, that's not helpful because uh, you have three separate uh, parts to this you would need to know at least one of these angles or you would need to know side C. But then we have the cosine law. This has three sides. All three sides are written in here, A, B, and C, and one angle. And uh, you can reorder this and, and switch around which sides and angles you have um, depending on where you're sort of standing on the triangle, uh, which angle you want to find or which angle you know. And so if you know, again, there's four pieces of information, three sides and an angle. If you know the right pieces, three of those pieces of information, you can find the remaining uh, missing item. So for example, if you knew all three sides, you could find the remaining angle. Or if you knew the angle A and you're trying and you knew B and C, you could find little a. Okay, so let's look at some examples of the different kinds. Here's a triangle with three sides that we know. We don't know any angles. So you can see then that the sine law is not going to be helpful for us. If I take any two ratios like these two, I'm going to need three of the four pieces of information. I'm, here I know A and I know B, but I don't know any angles. So I can't fill in this and I can't fill in this. Sine law is no good for us, but the cosine law is I can fill in this, 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 this. I just don't know this angle A. So I can fill in the rest of it and solve for A using my inverse uh, cosine uh, function. So that one is uh, cosine, and we often will write down a little abbreviation because this one is side, side, side. We have three sides, we get to use the cosine, func cosine law. All right, let's try another one here. How about this one? DEF here, I've got two sides and I have an angle. Now being careful though, that angle is over here. I've got two sides and the angle is not between them. So we might write, uh, we often write side, side, angle, because the angle is not between those two sides, it's important. Um, to solve this, I have an angle and the side across from it and one more side. That looks to me like sine law. I've got two sides and one of the angles that's across from one of those two sides, so I just have to find the other angle. That one is sine law. Nice. How about this guy? triangle GHJ, I avoided the I because it looks like a 1. I have two angles and I have a side. Hmm. Well, let's see here. Uh, I can't really use cosine law here because I have two angles and only one side. The cosine law only involves a single angle and I have to at least know two of the three sides to be able to use it. So that's no good, but I can use the sine law, right? Because I have, uh, let's see, I have one side. I could find the other side if I know the angle across from it. Well, I don't have the angle across from this, but I can figure it out because 70 and 60, that adds up to 130. The whole triangle has to be 180. That means this is 50 degrees. And now I can use the sine law because I have these two pieces of information for one side, and I could say use 60 degrees to find this other side, little j. So this again is sine law, and I have an angle, a side, and an angle. Okay, I got one more for you. Let's see. Move this out of the way. Triangle KLM here. I've got a side, I have an angle, and I have another side, and that angle is definitely between those two, so I'm going to write it down like this, side, angle, side, and you can see then, if I, once again, if I try to use sine law and I use two of the sides, I have side little m and little l here, let's, then I would need to have either 
angle M or angle L to be able to finish off uh, to the three or four pieces of information that I need, that's no good here. I can't do that. I don't know enough about either of these angles. I don't know any, what those are. So we go to cosine law. Let's see. I could fill in two sides all through here and then the other angle that I know right here. So that's this is the situation that we need. When I have two lengths and an angle between them, that's going to be a cosine law situation. So we've got four different situations that we can use here. Two of them give us sine law situations and two of them give us cosine law situations. So hopefully that helps to clear up uh, what can happen and once you've got a little bit of information, for example if you use cosine law once, then you've got enough to go switch to the sine law and simplify your life. Thanks.